Welcome to your first week one uh, little mini lecture. It won't last very long, I promise you. Uh, so I'm going to be covering a lot of material. If I talk a little bit too fast for you, uh, you're welcome to go back and watch the video again. Um, I'll also post uh, a transcript of what's being said during this video so that if you'd like to look at it, you're welcome to do that. So here we go. Um, I'm glad that you've joined us for this uh, North American Native uh, Nation uh, class. We get to learn about a lot of cultures and a lot of different parts of uh, North America, from mid-Mexico all the way up to the Arctic. You're going to be learning about this these cultures um, a little bit through the mini lectures, but also a lot through your textbook, uh, videos that were the best available for us uh, to be able to use, and the work that you're going to do on your uh, project. The textbook is not perfect, um, but after looking at 12 uh, textbooks that were available on the subject, this is the best one as far as meeting the course uh, objectives that we have within our course outline at SRJC for Anthro 32. So as you may know, I'll talk a little bit about this more next week. Um, when an instructor teaches a course, they're obliged to teach what has been put into uh, the course outline. And in this case, a tremendous amount of information because it lists all these different cultural areas that you're going to be learning about and uh, quite a few uh, technical terms as well. So, you know, how do you go about learning that? Well, first, it's great that you're watching this video. The next thing that you'll do is you'll be looking at your study guide. So I've created 15 study guides, one for each week. The study guides give you pretty much everything you need to learn um, in order to pass the quiz and also to meet the objectives of the class. Um, we have lots of quizzes. They're not terribly long, 10 to 20 minutes at most uh, each week. And um, I'll talk a little bit more about the quizzes in a few minutes. Within each study guide, uh, it also has uh, information not only from the book, but also the information from the videos that you'll watch for that week and the ethnographic videos. So it's really a good idea to have your study guide open as you read your textbook so you can take notes uh, in it. And the study guide suggests that you would copy this into, for example, a Word document, and then you could type your notes right there. But of course, if you're somebody that likes paper and pencil, you could print it out, you could do it that way. Um, when you watch the video, same thing. Better to review the questions before you watch the video that way you'd only have to watch it once while you're looking for key bits of information that are important for you to learn. The quizzes are always on Fridays, except for one that we have because of a holiday that's on a Thursday. How do you keep track of all of this? We have the all-in-one schedule. So for every week, it tells you in the all-in-one schedule, what do you need to read? What do you need to, um, how do you prepare? It has your study guide and so on. And I'll show you one of uh, the, I'll show you what the all-in-one schedule looks like in a couple of minutes so that you can see. It also has, it took quite a bit of work to do this, but it has links. So you can go to the all-in-one schedule and then jump to whatever part of the course that you need to be uh, learning about. So the all-in-one schedule is how to stay incredibly well organized uh, in an online class uh, for you and for me. And also it helps you get to the right part of the online class. Now, if you've had online classes before, you've probably experienced cases where you're clicking on folders and clicking and you can't find what you're looking for. So we try to make put a lot of work into trying to make it easier for you to use so that you can spend more time learning and less time looking around on a website to see where you're supposed to be going. <laughs> on the quizzes, most of the questions are either true, true false, or multiple choice. Um, I don't like the idea of trying to make tricky quizzes, uh, but you do need to learn the material before the quiz, even though it's going to be an open book and open study guide. If you don't know the information at all, you won't be able to look it up in time on the quiz. So it's better to really learn it. On the multiple choice, there are some questions that say all of the questions are true except one. All the answers on the multiple choices are true except one. And you'll be looking for an incorrect answer. Usually I make that in bold print or capital letters so that you'll not be confused about which kind of answer am I looking for? Am I looking for the correct answer or the incorrect answer? So you'll see when you take the first quiz, there's a few of these kinds of questions. Later in the uh, semester, there are a couple of questions that are essay. 
but there's only a few for the whole class and you can write and you don't need to worry about grammar and all of that for the essay questions. It's mostly to get your response after you've reflected about some of the material that you've learned. Um, I'm going to uh, move right now to a screen share, and I'm going to be showing you uh, what the study guide looks like. So hang on a second here. Okay, we don't need to look at that. And we don't need to look at that. And here we go. So uh, we're now looking uh, at the first study guide that you would see when you were um, within our website. And it has the same su suggested steps for all 15 study guides. Uh, suggested, as I mentioned earlier, that you put it into a Word document and then you're able to add notes to it. And before you read the text, watch the videos, you study the study guide or review the study guide first, and then keep it open while you're working. Now we move to the anthropological concepts or definitions that you need to learn for this week. All of these definitions that are in the study guides come from the course outline that I mentioned earlier, what the, what the college expects you to learn so that you can take this course and it can be transferred to any CSU, any UC, or any other university uh, in America, uh, because it is of that level of, um, of learning quality. So we have these words that you're gonna be learning, and then we get down to some notes. And this tells you that not everything that's listed here will necessarily be what's on quiz or maybe some other things. You have to actually read the chapter and learn about it. But these are some key facts that you would want to learn. For example, what is two-spirit? In the first five, four weeks, I give you, for some of the chapters, actual quotes from the textbook or a little bit of a synopsis. So these are facts. And then here I've even put in what page number, where do these come from? Not necessarily in order. So um, the, these facts will help you prepare. Later, from the fifth week onwards, I give you an outline of the chapter, and I don't actually pull out the facts, because I think by then you would have learned um, how to look for key facts yourself within the, each chapter. So there's really quite a bit in the first couple of chapters, because I didn't want to leave out anything that was too important. And of course, it looks a lot longer than it is, because it's on a it's only a column, it's not the full page. And then here, there was a part of the textbook that was really not very complete. Uh, it mentioned King Philip and how he was killed, but didn't mention that he was considered a British subject. He was an, an American Indian, Native American, who was considered a, a British subject. He was a citizen of Britain, basically. And then they thought that he was being disloyal because of the fighting. And so he was killed in the same kind of way that disloyal Englishmen were. And I've been to England and I've seen the plaques on the wall with what happens to people who were uh, disloyal in the past <laughs> in Britain. <laughs> anyway, so sometimes I'll give you a little something extra in these um, study guides that you can look at. And that would be all for first week. The other part that it asks you to do when you go to our homepage within uh, Anthro 32 is to look at the syllabus. And most of you probably have looked at that already because I sent it as an email to you uh, a few weeks ago. And the syllabus um, is, what, is what's now called a liquid syllabus. It has a little introduction, hello from me. And then it has all the information you need to understand about um, this course, including that uh, being a full-time student takes a lot of time. So for each three units of uh, coursework, it represents uh, to, to be at a, the level that's considered to be transferable to other universities, it takes about nine hours. So about three hours of classwork, such as the videos and so on um, that are on the website and another six hours of homework. So that's a lot. 
And that's what the people who developed our course outline, the professors were thinking about when they put in so much content into one course. Then if you go to the top, there's other buttons. If you're looking on a phone, you'll see the menu on the side, but this tells you more about the course, explains what you'll be doing in the course. And if you need support, support for you is really good because there's free support at SRJC, including free tutoring. When you uh, later in the course, there may be um, some activity where you might like to have some help with that. And I'll move this little picture so you can see there's also schedule, grading, and policies. The grading, pretty typical. If you get 90% or more, then you're looking at an A, 80 to 89% a B. We do not have minus and plus grades at the JC. I don't know why. It's only whole grades. So if you're <laughs> up at 89%, you'll want to do whatever you need to do to kind of bump up your grade to the to 90% if you could to be able to improve uh, your score. As far as late work goes, you don't you just do it as soon as you can. If it's late, then yes, you can lose some points, but it's better to turn it in late than to not turn it in at all. We have a total of 400 points in our class. The mini project that I'll talk about in a minute, small group discussions and exams, total 400 points. Let's go back to our course. So please regularly check announcements. Oh, you silly thing, it wants me to sign in. Okay, I'm not gonna sign in right now. <laughs> All right, um, so it, we have announcements that you should be checking. Um, when you go to learn about the mini uh, project, Let's uh, stop the share now. Uh, there's three parts. Uh, you'll be doing all three parts of your mini project on the same tribe. You'll be going to your small group in order to um, uh, pick which tribe that you're gonna be or which uh, native nation you're gonna be studying. And uh, each of you within a group will be doing a different uh, native nation, of course. So. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is stop this video now and make a part two um, because I want to be able to show you more things from the website.